The following podcast is brought to you by the Jonas Podcasting Network, found exclusively at WrestlingWithJonas.com. And hello again, wrestling fans. Welcome to another edition of This Week in History. Uh, this week we're putting it up at 11 o'clock in the morning on Thursday because at 12 noon is WD Crown Jewel. So I don't want to have any confliction there. We want to get uh, be your pre-show, shall we say, to Crown Jewel as WD uh, goes over to Saudi Arabia for another pay-per-view. And uh, we'll see what happens later on today with that. Uh, it looks like a stack card. Uh, more like a pay-per-view rather than a house show. But we're here. We're doing This Week in History. Thank you for watching on YouTube, Facebook, listening to us on iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Spotify, anywhere else you get your podcasts from. And be sure to stop by our store over at Pro Wrestling Tees where you can get this shirt or any of our other shirts. Just go to ProWrestlingTees.com backslash Scumbags Wrestling and you can get any of our shirts and support Steven's uh, Wrestling Journey and Carrie Mel Formation Research with Sick Kids Hospital in Toronto. We are thankful for our sponsorship with Cool Bet, and want to remind everybody to stay cool and bet responsibly. We're going to have a uh, Ontario Indie Road Trip show uh, tomorrow, and of course, hopefully you tuned in uh, yesterday for our predictions show, and you have your predictions in on time. Still got about a half hour to uh, get your predictions in for Crown Jewel. So, with that said, we're going to head over to Niagara Falls and see Jonesy. How are you, sir? I apologize if it's a little misty uh, behind me. Well, you are in the falls, so it mist is expected, but yeah, it happens. It's all good. We are here to talk about the week in wrestling history, October 15th through the 21st, and uh, if you're ready, so am I. All right, I am. I am almost ready. There. October 15th, 15 years ago at a SmackDown taping in L.A., Chavo Guerrero defeated Rey Mysterio in a I Quit match. Mysterio would take almost a year off until SummerSlam the following August. Definitely uh, unique uh, how they ended up using everywhere for this I Quit match. And as you see, Rey's hanging upside down, uh, getting beat on by... Uh, Chavo for his knee, and he's known for having knee issues, so Chavo did get the victory, and his sister-in-law right there by his side. Yeah, beautiful Vicky. <coughs> Fifteen years ago, at an impact taping, Kurt Angle defeated Sting to win the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. This just one day after Sting defeated Angle to retain the title at Bound for Glory. Yeah, hot potato titles. Gotta love them. Well, then, yeah, it is a hot potato. It is. Um, it's kind of. The, the, and then it happens sometimes with uh, WWE as well. Instead of it changing titles at a pay per view, they do it on the TV show because really they need those ratings. Moving on, nine years ago, Awesome Wrestling Entertainment presented Night of the Legends from Virginia. Like a lot of the Heroes of Wrestling shows, this one made the list for the top 10 of our show of the year. Uh, a few of the matches, Tommy Dreamer defeated uh, Terry Funk, and hey, they weren't, uh, or they were still old back then, but not as old as they are now. Hacksaw Jim Duggan defeated Mohammed Akbar. I don't quite remember Mohammed Akbar, but. And then the, um, the main. Uh, no, I lost myself. There I am. The scheduled Rock and Roll Express versus Kevin Nash and Diamond Dallas Page was changed to a singles match between Kevin Nash and Ricky Morton, and it became a no DQ match, uh, which meant both DDP and Robert Gibson could stay at ringside. That makes a lot of no sense. Uh, during the match, Nash uh, grabs the mic. He and Morton work out some issues on the mic. In the end, Morton gets a jackknife and a verbal assault from Nash, claiming he could care less about the fans as long as he gets his t-shirt money. Nash would then leave the ring and get counted out. Yeah, you gotta love when those legends uh, just basically want the money, obviously, as Kevin said. And I'm going to guess with that one, either Robert Gibson or DVP were not 
uh, able to work the match and take actual bumps. They could have done this whole thing. That's why they were at ringside, but not able to uh, be in the match. But I tried looking for this one, just like uh, Night of Champions, and we po I posted that on the Facebook page a little bit later than I intended to. But, uh, yeah, you can't find this one available. There's like a clip with a uh, horrible-looking Battle Royal, but the card itself is not available uh, from what I've seen, or I would definitely share it with uh, our friends. Well, with the T-shirt money and all that, when Nash wants his money, you better get it or there could be trouble. Uh, moving on, it's a happy 39th birthday to Haku Ming's son, uh, Tamatonga. And uh, today would have been the 61st birthday of WCW Master Blaster Blade. Uh, right. Alfred, De sorry? Oh, we were just talking about Kevin Nash, and this was uh, oh, yes. Kevin Nash's tag team partner. Yep. Alfred uh, Dubalo, uh, also known as Al Green, Rage of the Wrecking Crew. Uh, Green was a part of wrestling's history when at Super Bowl 2000, he had a knife pulled on him by Tank Abbott following a match. He was 57. I love when Tank brings a knife to the wrestling fights. Yeah. I think Tank was I mean, with... Uh, so, 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 hey, all the four dollars the they use, why would you grab a chair when you could just grab a knife? Very true. Moving on to October 16th. 34 years ago in Kansas City, the Sheep Herders, Butch and Luke, defeated the Lightning Express, uh, being Brad Armstrong and Tim Horner, to win the UWF Bill Watts version. Uh, tag team championship and would be the final tag uh, champions for that Bill Watts version before Jim Crockett bought out that promotion. Um, much uh, a little different looking than the uh, happy uh, Bushwhackers. Yeah, I was going to say, and those uh, are not aware, this is Luke and Butch with just long hair of the Bushwhackers. But they were actually a better team as the Sheep Herders and not used for comedy. I wonder what they would have been like if uh, the Attitude Era had been around while they were a little more in their prime in WWE, and instead of going against the Beverly Brothers and uh, the Rougeos all the time, if they had uh, turned heel and did the uh, Sheep Herders uh, gimmick, how they would have been accepted there. Because people only think of them as the comedy guys with uh, the Bushwhackers and even questioned why they were inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. But if you look back at their uh, career with the Sheep Herders and the Kiwis and everything, uh, the other teams that they were, they definitely deserved it. Maybe not for their WWE side. Well, in their defense, in the WWE, they were uh, popular as hell. Uh, and anytime you got to see them live – the crowd would just pop for for them and the arms waving and all that. It they're they're terrible to watch in the ring, but they they were that era's entertainment of a goofy good tag team and good meeting, not evil. Yeah, I think uh, there was a uh, part on uh, one of Bruce Pritchard's uh, something to wrestle with. They talked about the Bushwhackers and they didn't even see themselves being thought of as fan favorites and kind of scoffed at uh, the idea of, yeah, good luck trying to make us look like good guys and uh, fan favorites and loved by the kids. And lo and behold, the magic of Vince McMahon in that time was able to do it. And the theme hurt, uh, the theme song didn't hurt them either. No. 33 years ago in Providence, Rhode Island, Ted DiBiase won the 1988 King of the Ring tournament defeating then WWF champion Macho Man Randy Savage. Yeah, this one had an interesting uh, combination of matches because you had some heels against uh, each other uh, going through it. Um, like Mike Sharp against Boris Sukov. Some of these matches, you don't even realize why are you in here at all. Uh, dangerous Danny Davis against Shawn Michaels. Of course, that was Shawn Michaels as a tag team with Rockers because Marty was in there against the Red Rooster and losing. Like that, it's just a weird. 16 I think I think Iron Mike Sharp should have beat the Red Rooster. 
If he can beat friggin' um, Boris Boris Zukov, you should be able to beat uh, the friggin' Red Rooster. Yeah, and then today uh, we're going to have a new king and our first ever official queen of the ring. Oh, yes. Um, I was going to say something else with that, but it slipped my mind. Anyways, 21 years ago on Raw is War from Detroit. Uh, William Regal defeated Al Snow to win the WWF European Championship. 17 years ago, Stuart Edward Stu Hart passed away from a stroke. He was 88. Of course, the father of the Hart Wrestling Dynasty, uh, he had an interesting upbringing as a young Stu lived in a tent with his family, living off the land and wrestling wild forest game for food. Uh, Stu would kill them first with his slingshot because his daddy got arrested for not paying his taxes. Uh, and uh, IRS was around before Rotunda suited up. Uh, he began his wrestling career in Edmonton with the YMCA in 1929. He played for the CFL's Edmonton Eskimos during his time with the Canadian Navy as the director of athletics. He was introduced to pro wrestling. He started wrestling bears and a tiger and soon uh, after formed Stampede Wrestling and brought a man bought a mansion in the Patterson Heights area of Calgary where the famous Hart Dudgeon was born. He'd marry Helen Hart. They'd have many children, including Brett uh, Hitman Hart and Owen Hart. And unlike uh, um, Jerry Lawler, they weren't all in the same litter. And here's a short list of those trained in the Dudgeon, Brett Norn, of course, and all the brothers. Superstar Billy Graham, Greg, Greg Valentine, Davey Boy Smith, Brian Pillman, Jushin Thunder Liger, Chris Jericho, Chris Benoit, Lance Storm, Edge Christian, Mark Henry, Natalia Neidhart, and I believe the last was Tyson Kidd. Yep, the last one, Tyson Kidd. Um, but of course, Sting's in there too, isn't he? He went there for some training? Maybe, but not uh, officially. No, I, I thought, something tells me he he's a part of that list too. But uh, I think the Hart House now is... A hotel or something in uh, Calgary uh, when it was sold and it's no longer owned by the Hearts. Someone made it into a hotel. Yeah, but the um, the plaque is still there. I do yeah. believe on the house. Yeah, because I think it was a condition of that the house being sold. Anywho, ten years ago, TNA presented Bound for Glory. Uh, the show featured the final match of Hulk Hogan's wrestling career versus Sting. Thank God. Oh, yeah. It's a happy 58th birthday for Melissa Ann Hyatt, a.k.a. WCW's very yummy Missy Hyatt. Who I never realized was in WWE. Uh, I guess she only was there briefly, but uh, mm -hmm. she's definitely best known for her time in uh, WCW. And I think then she went to Smoky Mountain or something like that as well. And, of course, she uh, ended up getting uh, Tammy Sitch into a uh, uh, topless uh, website as well. Her Ooh. and somebody else, the three of them, started off doing uh, photos and websites for money that way before uh, OnlyFans existed. Wow. Moving on to October 17th. 21 years ago, WWF presented No Mercy from the Gun Arena in Cleveland, Ohio. This would be, pardon me, this would be Jeff Jarrett's final appearance in the WWF, and Jeff would squeeze big money out of Vince before he'd walk that aisle. Yeah, I guess he, uh, that was one of the uh, topics in my world, uh, the Jeff Jarrett uh, podcast that he has, and uh, it talks about squeezing Vince for money, and he kind of puts a little bit of a denial on there, uh, but he does say that, they're supposed to get money from the venue, which paid him what it was owed, and he did the uh, job after all. But um, he, it was a good housekeeping match, if I recall right, uh, that he had with China. And instead of showering and changing uh, to, after the match, he ended up just getting his bag and leaving. And he was covered in eggs and flour and everything, and sat on the airplane. Uh, reeking of it. Hmm. Awesome. Poor passengers. 
Uh, Moolah defeated Ivory, becoming the oldest 70, uh, 76 at the time, a uh, women's champion in WWF history. China became the first woman to hold the IC belt by defeating Double J. The new brood, uh, Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy, defeated Edge and Christian in a tag team ladder match to win the Terry Invitational Tournament. And yes, that spells tit. Uh, the win gave the new brood $100,000 and the man, uh, man, managerial services of Terry. And the main event, Triple H, defeated Stone Cold Steve Austin in an Anything Goes match to retain the WWF belt. Yeah, they didn't really do much follow-up after uh, that whole Terry Invitational Tournament. Uh, they got the services of Terry, but that didn't last long. And I believe the next night on uh, Raw... Uh, both teams had mutual admiration for each other, shook each other's hands, hugged and raised hands. And it was just like, okay. And that was, I believe, the first ever tag team ladder match that happened at that one. Yep. And then the WWF salivated all over things after that because the, the, the magic that tag teams could do with ladder matches, wow. All right, and it's a happy 59th birthday for Stephen Douglas McMichael, known more famously as Steve Mongo McMichael. Uh, McMichael would be best known as a legendary member of the NFL Chicago Bears. He would start 101 consecutive games and was a, a, a part of the 1990 Super Bowl champs. He'd have a brief stay with the WWF for WrestleMania 11 but would end up in WCW as a part of the Nitro commentator lineup. He transitioned to the ring and joined the Four Horsemen as the, at the Great American Bash, turning on fellow NFL player Kevin Green. He wasn't great in the ring, but he did have the look. He was married to Deborah McMichael. After wrestling, he would coached the Continental Indoor Football League, uh, and, uh, the, and that was the Chicago Slaughter from 2007 to 2013, winning the uh, CIFL championship in 2009 with a perfect 14-0 season. Uh, McMichael did run uh, for mayor of Rome Romeoville, Illinois, but he lost. Yeah, and uh, today, as you see in this uh, picture on the right-hand <laughs> side, he um, is currently... Um, battling ALS, and oh, uh, oh that yeah, was him so in the wheelchair. That, that's him in the wheelchair. I'll bring that back up. Oh, that's awful. Yeah, so he's battling ALS. Uh, you got the uh, story out there. Um, maybe not so proud of himself, like uh, you know, not wanting to, uh, people to see him like that, but uh, just the way uh, the story went, it was a uh, really good, uh, touching story. Uh, they're raising funds for him, uh, so I believe there's a GoFundMe out there for that. And uh, just speaking of uh, ALS, this weekend, uh, you want to check out uh, Moonshine Wrestling. Uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, there is um, wrestling with uh, uh, ALS. Uh, Friday is all uh, podcasts. Saturday is going to be an auction, a wrestling event in St. Catharines where you can get tickets. Um, check out uh, our page so how you can get tickets for it. And then afterwards, there's going to be live comedy with people like uh, Kobe Durst and Holden Albright. And then the following day on Saturday, uh, Sunday is all podcasts. And we have one at 3 o'clock, which is a um, fantasy warfare tournament looking at Franken uh, tag teams. So uh, oh, wow. tune in there and, uh, yeah, give uh, money to ALS Research. That's stuff happening right here in Ontario. And uh, check out our website for uh, more details on that. But that's this Saturday, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, and as you see, uh, nobody's immune to it, even Steve Mongo McMichaels. But at least he still has that look to his face there. Yeah. No, it's him when you look directly at him. All right, we're moving on to October 18th. 24 years ago in Philly, the FBI, Little Guido and Tracy Smothers, defeated the Gangstonators, being John Kronos and New Jack, to win the ECW World Tag Team Championship. 23 years ago, WWF presented Judgment Day in Your House from the Rosemont Horizon in Chicago, Illinois. 
a debuting Christian uh, defeated Taka, Taka Minchi Noku to win the WWF Light Heavyweight Championship. What a way to debut. Uh, X-Pac defeated D'Lo Brown to win the WWF European Championship. Mark Henry defeated The Rock and the main event, The Undertaker fought Kane to a no contest for the vacated WWF Championship. Stone Cold Steve Austin was the special referee. 22 years ago on Raw is War from Columbus, Ohio. The Hollies, Crash and Hardcore, defeated the Rock and Sock Connection to win the WWF Tag Team Belts. Somewhat of an underrated tag team, in my opinion. I liked uh, these two together, uh, including Molly Holly. Uh, for a guy like Bob Holly, who honestly was going nowhere at one point, he was even looking like Bret Hart uh, uh, before he... Uh, Got signed by WWE, going by Hollywood Bob Holly, and then he was Thurman Sparky Plug. The whole change in shaving his hair down after the job squad and going hardcore, then bringing in his whole family, I think uh, stretched out his career uh, to the 15 years that he did have with WWE. Or without that, I don't see him of lasting as long as he did. Ah, uh, yeah. It, it's good that he, I think his ending was his better part of his career. Exactly. All right. And over on Nitro, the Filthy Animals, Conan and Rey Mysterio Jr., defeated Harlem Heat uh, to win the WCW World Tag Team Championship. And this was the first show for WCW under the new head writers of Vince Russo and Ed Ferrara. And yes, that is Rey Mysterio with Billy Kidman there looking like a 10-year-old boy with championship belts and standing beside Yeah, when the mask came off him, I uh, understand why he put the mask back on. No offense. To yeah. The guy, but, uh, yeah, really young looking there. 16 years ago at a SmackDown taping, Booker T defeated Chris Benoit to win the WWE United States Championship. 12 years ago, TNA presented Bound for Glory. Eric Young defeated Kevin Nash and Hernandez in the three-way match to win the TNA Legends Championship. Uh, in a full metal mayhem double ladder four-way match for the TNA and IWGP Tag Team Championship. The British Invasion would win the TNA Tag Titles while Team 3D won the IWGP Tag Titles. And hey, that uh, also had a Monsters Ball match uh, with uh, Foley against Abyss. Uh, if anything, that's probably a dream match that WWE fans would have loved to have seen had Abyss ever gone over to WWE like he uh, almost did to go against Undertaker. But seeing uh, Foley against uh, Abyss, can't go wrong with that. I think Abyss would have also done great against either of the Brothers of Destruction. Oh, yeah. Definitely. And uh, Dr. Stevie uh, Stevie Richards was the special referee. Kurt Angle defeated Matt Morgan, and AJ Styles defeated Sting to retain the TNA belt. It's a happy fifth, uh, ugh, It's a happy 38th birthday for Seth Lesser, a.k.a. Simon Gotch, who was part of the NXT WWE VOD Villains with Aiden English. And currently, Seth wrestles for Major League Wrestling. And it's a happy 62nd birthday to John Nord. Husk, husk. Trained by Eddie Sharkey, Nord had stops in Mid-South Wrestling, the American Wrestling Association, World Class Championship Wrestling, and Pacific Northwest Wrestling before landing in the WWF in 1991. Uh, initially called the Viking, Nord became the Berserker with Mr. Fuji by his side. He was a savage wrestler who would uh, preferably win matches by throwing their opponent over the top rope for the countout while shouting husk, husk, husk. This was done as a tribute to Bruiser Brody. And note, he won a 40-man battle royal on primetime wrestling. Perfect for his gimmick. Yeah. After retiring from wrestling in 2002, Nord went to work at his brother's auto dealership, uh, Nord East uh, Motors in Hilltop, Minnesota. And I do encourage you to look on YouTube for, 
for this. Uh, just put Nord the Barbaric used car salesman. If you probably just put in Nord and Barbaric, you'll get it. It is, it's, it's funny. He's dressed up in that whole get up and he's selling a car. I'll have to check it out. <clears throat> All right. Moving on. October 19th. 36 years ago in San Juan, Puerto Rico, Carlos Colon defeated uh, Abdul the Butcher to win the WWC Universal Heavyweight Championship. He always uh, makes me laugh whenever anything comes up with uh, good old Carlos, obviously the father of uh, Carlito and uh, also uh, Eddie Colon, who was uh, Primo, I believe, uh, and the uncle to uh, Epico. But... The fact is, uh, Carlos was part of a Royal Rumble one year, and you got Gorilla Monsoon calling him a young up-and-comer as he's making his way to the ring, and he was nothing but old, uh, young and up-and-coming. He was already a well-established superstar in uh, Puerto Rico. So it kind of seemed odd to have Monsoon calling him a young up-and-comer. Maybe, maybe he didn't like the guy. Because I believe did he he had something to do with uh, the death of uh, Brody. Uh, uh, Brody. So uh, I don't think too highly of him because of that. Okay. There's a lot of heat on him. Twenty years ago in Yokohama, Japan, Vader and Two Cold Scorpio defeated uh, Jun uh, Akiyama and Akutoshi Sato in a tournament final to be crowned the first pro wrestling Noah GHC. Tag team champs. Also, 20 years ago in Perth, Australia, Road Dog defeated Jeff Jarrett to become the first World Wrestling All Stars World Heavyweight Champion. Yeah, WWA is almost a forerunner to uh, what uh, eventually became TNA. Um, oh. Jarrett was working with the guys with uh, WWA, and uh, people involved with that were. Uh, Sort of, I'm not sure. I'd have to go back and listen to the uh, actual podcast, but there was either a collaboration or a disagreement with WDA, which started uh, Jarrett and uh, Bob Ryder was one of the people who uh, suggested TNA as well and working with uh, them bringing in Jerry Jarrett and stuff like that. But it definitely is at the sort of source of TNA wrestling's uh, birth. Uh, 18 years ago, WWE presented No Mercy in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, one of the show's featured belts was a father-daughter I quit match, uh, Vince against his baby girl. Uh, intergender matches at the time were forbidden under Maryland State Athletic Commission rules, but WWE paid the fine in advance to have the match go on as planned. The Big Show defeated Eddie Guerrero to win the WWE United States Championship. And Brock Lesnar defeated The Undertaker in a biker chain match to retain the WWE Championship. Yeah, just going back a moment for that uh, Vince versus Stephanie match. This was, I believe, a week or so before Stephanie was to marry Triple H. And Linda had even threatened Vince that if there's any bruises on Stephanie... Before the wedding, he was going to hear about it from Linda, and there was going to be hell to pay. But he obviously took care of his baby girl and uh, was ready to walk her down the aisle to uh, give away to Triple H the following week. Nice. 17 years ago, WWE presented Taboo Tuesday. This was the first pay-per-view in WWE history where match stipulations and opponents were determined by a fan vote. In a pre-show dark match, Surgeon Slaughter defeated Mohammed Hassan by DQ. Uh, a bunch of the lady wrestlers were in a fulfill your fantasy battle royal to retain the WWE Women's Championship. The ladies all wore schoolgirl outfits, as decided by 53% of the vote. Other choices were French maids, and the other was nurse uniforms. So, basically... WWE fans are pervs. Pervs, yes. Bless them. Randy Orton defeated Ric Flair in a steel cage match. Uh, the steel cage match was the runaway fan choice for the stipulation with 68%. 
Yeah, WWE claims that uh, the voting was real. There's uh, guys like Dave Meltzer, I think, who said it uh, was not real. But I think WWE did at least skew uh, the viewers to guide them towards where they wanted to go rather than, you know, play around with the vote. I think only one, uh, a couple times were they surprised by the actual vote by the fans. But I think doing something like that makes it unique for starters, but it also gauges where the fan uh, ideas are, like who's popular, who isn't, what they're looking forward to. It wouldn't be bad for WD uh, to pull out something like that again. I heard um, that both USA and uh, Fox are not too happy with the way ratings are right now, and they uh, are wanting to encourage WD to pull out some of their old tricks. That's why we have the King of the Ring and the Queen's uh, Crown going on right now. So they can pull out Legends Night, but why not do a uh, uh, fan voting, Taboo Tuesday, Cyber Sunday, whatever they want to call it for Monday or Friday, uh, phonetically uh, named yeah. event, but do that with the fans on uh, one of those special shows. It doesn't have to be the whole show. They could have special matches only like here's your world title match there's your vote you know pull out some of those tricks and see where the fans are and you might be surprised that fans might be backing somebody that they didn't expect yep and that's how you also create new superstars 18 years ago michael hegstrand uh aka road warrior hawk died of a sudden heart attack in his home in indiana rock's head uh, Florida, he was only 46. And I believe we're both that age. And he's gone. Yep, they're both gone. Yeah. 13 years ago, Hulk Hogan's Celebrity Championship Wrestling debuted on CMT. With appearances by Rob Van Dam and Bill Goldberg, the 10 cast members were Danny Bonaducci, Butterbean, Todd Bridges, uh, which I would love to have seen, uh, Dustin Diamond, uh, Aaron Murphy, Dennis Rodman, Trishel Cantanella, or sorry, Can Canatella, uh, Tiffany model Nikki Ziering, and actor singer Frank Stallone. Uh, Tiffany was eliminated on the debut episode. Um, Todd Bridges ended up in the final before losing to Dennis Rodman. Shocking that he would lose to an NWO guy. Yeah. It's a happy 50th birthday to Julia Hamer Beavis, a.k.a. Sweet Sarah uh, Saraya Knight, a.k.a. WWE Paige's mom. Moving on to October 20th. 57 years ago, Mad Dog Vachon defeated Vern Gagne to win the AWA World Heavyweight Championship. 37 you. years. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, with Mad Dog, he was actually the father of Luna Vachon, and you can uh, check out the latest uh, Dark Side of the Ring uh, from last week with uh, it being about Luna Vachon, and you find out a uh, little bit of surprises because how many people knew that Gangrel was married to her, or even, um, I forget his name, uh, but one of the, her son was on Hell's Kitchen. Hmm. Yeah, I haven't finished watching that episode. Um, have enjoyed it so far. I always loved Luna Vachon. Uh, uh, I thought she was one of the best, really, in for women's wrestling back in those days. October 20th, which we already did. So 37 years ago, uh, Dusty Rhodes and Manny Fernandez defeated Ivan Goloff and Don Kernoodle to win the NWA World Tag Team Championship. I have a feeling you just put that in there because you wanted to say Don Carnoodle. Yes, I, I, that's one I do like, Carnoodle. What a great name. 25 years ago, WWF presented In Your House 11, Buried Alive. I can't believe 25 years ago. Like, holy crap. In a free-for-all pre-show match, the stalker, Barry Windham, defeated J uh, Justin Bradshaw. This match would be the longest match on the card at 20 minutes. The Undertaker defeated Mankind in a Buried Alive match. A post-match saw Terry Gordy as the executioner, making his WWF debut and would join in a massive beatdown and burial 
of The Undertaker. The show would end with The Undertaker's purple gloves sticking out of the dirt. Yep. And uh, this past week on uh, Something to Wrestle with uh, Bruce Pritchard's show, uh, they actually uh, talk about the lead up to uh, that event and all the backstage uh, stuff going on, uh, debunk some of Dave Meltzer's uh, reports, and they get to uh, the pay per view itself. And this tombstone is a legit tombstone that was made and weighed about a thousand pounds, and that they lugged around from town to town and set up at every uh, event just to remind people that it was coming up and stuff like that. But I guess uh, from what Bruce said, uh, it was kind of wobbly and they were happy that it didn't actually uh, tip over when people were filling up the hole um, because that would have landed on uh, The Undertaker and God knows what would have happened after that. But he, Bruce, for our nuns pal, uh, Bruce did not give away what the trick is to doing uh, this type of match. Uh, Conrad, though, said that it's available as a uh, somebody who spoiled uh, things on an NBC uh, behind the magic type deal of uh, events like this, that it's on YouTube. So if you believe Bruce and Conrad, you can find how, how they do the buried live match. But if not, you have to uh, just let the magic remain and not go with what happened. Yep. My guess is it's a trap door of some sort. There's lots of different types. It could be. Uh, do, 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 do. 21 years ago, WCW releases Bret Hart following a scathing column in the Calgary Sun from Hart attacking WCW's product. Uh, the company stopped using him altogether. His final appearance was six weeks prior to being fired by FedEx when Hart blocked a Goldberg spear with a hidden steel plate. Yeah, no follow-up from that, and uh, it just definitely proved uh, Vince right when uh, they were talking about uh, on Wrestling with Shadows that the WCW would not know what to do if they had a Bret Hart. I doubt they'd even know what they'd uh, be able to do if they had gotten Sean instead, except for Sean would have obviously been paired up with Hall and Nash and may have had a better shot at doing something uh, compared to what Brett did. But mm -hmm. then WDE, whether you believe that it was uh, fake or not, the whole screw job, the screw job did give Bret Hart over to WCW on a silver platter with a built-in storyline and they failed to play off that. So yeah. Vince was right. They didn't know what to do with a Bret Hart. Yup. Uh, Kurt Angle and Chris Benoit defeated Rey Mysterio and Edge to be crowned WWE's first ever SmackDown Tag Team Champions. And Brock Lesnar defeated The Undertaker in a Hell in a Cell match to retain the WWE Championship. 18 years ago on Raw, the Dudley Boys defeated La Resistance, Rene Dupree, and Robert Conway to retain the World Tag Team Championship. They would win the Doomsday Device, oh, sorry, with the Doomsday Device, a tribute to one half of the famed Tag Team Road Warriors, Michael Road Warrior Hawk Hegstrand, who did die one day earlier. Very nice thing for them to do. Well, two of the greatest tag teams ever, uh, most decorated. Yeah. especially at that time. Of course, now you can look at a team like FTR who have taken all the belts basically from WWE, uh, AEW, and now Mexico. And, of course, there's also the Bucks who have their uh, arena titles. But if you go with before current time, definitely the Dudley Boys and uh, Road Warriors are up there as uh, 1A and 1B of greatest of all time. Absolutely. 14 years ago at UFC 77 in Cincinnati, Ohio, Brock Lesnar was spotted in the front row and was introduced as UFC's newest sign E. Uh, he would win the UFC heavyweight championship in his third bout by defeating Randy Kochir. Uh, it's a happy 63rd birthday for Scott Spaceship Oliver Ramon Hall. Scott Hall, he was born to a military family in Miami, Florida, attended high school in Munich, Germany, 
he'd get a degree in pre-med on his way to a career as a doctor. Uh, however, his side job wrestling would take him on a different path. He'd be trained by Dan Spivey under Mike Rotunda, uh, Barry Windham, and Dusty Rhodes. He joined Jim Crockett Promotions with Spivey as the Tag Team American Starship. That wouldn't last long, though, as they hardly wrestled and worked their side job as ground crew members for Crockett's minor league baseball team, the Charlotte Orioles. He joined AWA but returned to NWA in 1989, one year before AWA's demise. He briefly held the uh, Caribbean Heavyweight Championship before joining WCW. Of course, after WCW, he moved on to the WWF for the brief of Razor Ramon. And, of course, the rest you probably already know. Yeah, um, it's interesting to see uh, what he looked like in the, uh, well, as uh, Starship Coyote, as well as uh, tagging up with... uh, Mr. Perfect or Kurt Hennig in the AWA, he had big poofy hair and uh, the mustache, almost Magnum uh, PI style going on for him. And then as a diamond stud, he already looked like Razor Ramon. So when he went from that to Razor, but then went back to uh, WCW looking like Razor or diamond stud, WWE was able to sue them for copyright or gimmick infringement. Meanwhile, he had the same look, whether he was Diamond Stud, Razor, or Scott Hall. And WCW probably could have gotten out of that lawsuit had they realized it in the first place and uh, been like, no, it's Diamond Stud. What are you talking about? But another point uh, that probably doesn't help uh, the fact that he is as messed up, uh, unfortunately, as he is and addicted uh, as his addictions is that before becoming a wrestler, he was a bouncer in a bar where he ac- accidentally shot and killed somebody. And he was able to get off because of it being a self-defense and stuff like that. I believe uh, the person that got killed uh, pulled a gun in the bar, but that can really mess you up. And I wonder if uh, that is one of the uh, issues that he faces on a daily basis. I think it was uh, mentioned in... Uh, Possibly Jake Roberts' uh, DVD uh, resurrection of uh, Jake because uh, Scott was also in the uh, uh, house with DDP, the accountability home. But if it wasn't there, there was definitely a video series about Razor and uh, Scott's uh, struggles, and that was brought up. So all we can do is thank uh, DDP for being able to keep these guys going because every time you hear somebody is passed away, you always wonder if it's going to be Jake. You wonder if it's going to be Scott, but it's never them. And luckily they're still around. Yeah, and uh, Jake seems to be doing better out of the two. 20 years ago, WWF presented No Mercy 2001. Uh, Edge defeated Christian in a ladder match to win the WWF Intercontinental Championship. I think I missed the thing, didn't I? That's all good. We'll go back. All right. So this is October 21st, by the way. Yep. (laughs) Uh, So Edge defeated Christian in a ladder match to win the WWF IC belt. Chris, Chris Jericho defeated The Rock to win the WCW Championship. And Steve Austin defeated Kurt Angle and Rob Van Dam in a triple threat match to retain the WWF Championship. All right, we'll just go back 49 years ago. All Japan Pro Wrestling held its first ever show at Mashida City Gym in Tokyo, Japan. In the main event, uh, we saw Bruno San Martino and Terry Funk defeat Giant Baba and Thunder Sigayama in a two out of three falls match. All right. 20 years ago in Evansville, Indiana, AJ Styles defeated P.D. Williams, Christopher Daniels, and Chris Sabin in a four-way match to win the IWA Mid-South Heavyweight Championship. 18 years ago at a SmackDown taping, the Basham brothers, Doug and Danny, uh, defeated Los Guerreros, uh, Eddie and Shabo to win the WWE Tag Team Championship. It's a happy 51st for Ace uh, Julius Connor, best known to wrestling fans as D'Lo Brown. 
or sorry, I guess it's AC. Is it AC Aki? I don't know. AC Connor. AC. All right. Uh, of course, he, you would know him as D Lo Brown. Back in 1994, he served as a jobber for Earthquake on a WWF Superstars match. Connor would join the WWF in 1990, uh, 1997 as one of the members of the Nation of Domination. Brown's success came in singles, where he won the WWF IC Championship four times in 1998 and 99, and the European Championship once. He would be managed by Theodore Long for a few months before he was released from the company in February of 2003. Uh, the next month, he would join TNA. He would then wrestle for Irish Whip Wrestling in Ireland, regularly toured the United States Kingdom, and for All Pro, uh, All Japan and Pro Wrestling Noah. Currently, he signed Impact Wrestling as a wrestler, producer, and commentator. Connor is also a certified public accountant, graduated from the University of Maine. He is married and has two children. Yeah, he's currently uh, doing commentary for, uh, as I said, Impact Wrestling, and they have uh, Bound for Glory coming up uh, this Saturday. So we're doing a double shot of uh, the Predictions League for today with uh, Crown Jewel and Saturday for uh, Impact Wrestling's Bound for Glory. That uh, is going to be a busy week, and I'm thankful we got this uh, done in time for people to enjoy uh, Crown Jewel. So if yes. you want to thank our uh, people that made this possible. Absolutely. This week in wrestling history is compiled from the vast land of Google, Wikipedia, CageSideSeats.com, and most importantly from fans and journalists that had front row seats to history. And, of course, a big thank you always to our sponsor, sponsor CoolBet, CoolBet.com, and sportsbook betting and casino games. Stay cool and bet responsibly. Of course. So, uh, yeah, uh, we are just coming up to 12 noon and don't want to delay this any further. But uh, thank you for joining us on uh, YouTube and Facebook, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, everywhere you get your stuff from. Make sure you have your predictions in because the Crown Jewel show is about to start. And uh, I'm going to be sitting back and keeping track of all that for the Predictions League. The championship belt is on the line, still getting points for that. Uh, we are going to also have a uh, Ontario Indy road trip calendar uh, coming up with the events, including uh, wrestling uh, with ALS. You want to uh, take in that whole weekend, and there's other uh, events coming to you from Seaway Valley in Cornwall and much more, including a new school wrestling event on Sunday, uh, and that's going to uh, also be honoring hacker Scotty O'Shea or anti-hero uh, Scotty O'Shea. Uh, he's still uh, recovering from the brain uh, bleed and tumor that they found. So any way you can support uh, his wife and daughter while he recuperates is definitely appreciated and much needed. So get out there, support wherever uh, you can find things going on, uh, helping out the uh Sherlock family, and uh, yeah, do what you can in wrestling as well. Thank you once again, Chris, for that. Always. And we will see you next week with another edition of This Week in Wrestling History. <laughs>